What is up, you guys? Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Kojo Show. Show. I am your host, Joseph O'Brien. And I'm your host, Kobe James. <laughs> You're like, that's it? That's it? <laughs> let's talk music. And let's talk life. We started a podcast. Yes, we did now. We started a podcast. It's the Kojo Show. Yo, Joseph, did we make a podcast? Uh, I guess we did. Do you think anybody's going to listen? Yeah, absolutely not. Kojo! Updates on life. All right, Joseph. Life updates, man. What's going on with you? Okay, so uh, recently okay, I just... Okay, so... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I am just getting over sickness, and that will bring me to... I was traveling with Michael W. Smith. What? Um, and we were in North Carolina, and I got to travel on his bus. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and just hang around him. He's a super nice guy. Like, not fake at all. You would think, like, oh, a celebrity of that status. Like, he might, he might like, yeah. put it on. But he's, like, generally one of the most kind people I've ever met. Yeah. He's got super white teeth, right? He does have white teeth. I've always thought they were... Um, veneers. veneers? Veneers? They're not veneers. They, they're, they're fake. He has very white... White teeth. I just can't imagine him popping them out. Great dentist, man. Be like, way maker, miracle worker. <laughs> yeah, no I got to just be with him. Um, it was kind of this uh, event for his super fans. Oh, like people who are massive Michael W. Smith fans all gathered in one uh, congregation. Oh wow! Why wasn't I invited? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got to lead worship a couple times, do a little mini concert, and uh, John Reddick was there, who's also on my label, and so that Neat. was cool. What does he sing? Uh, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was like number five on the charts. Wow. Really that's good. Awesome. Great. Um, and what else happened? Oh, yeah. I got sick. Yeah. I got sick during the weekend, and uh, I came down with a sore throat. And really, to this day, I'm still worried that I might have gotten Michael W. Smith sick, and I really no, hope I didn't. He's I might have. I mean, I shook his hand. I might have hugged him or Christian side him, like no. side hugged him once. Nah, he's good. He's good. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll be. Well, uh, be praying for him. Yeah. Um, what's up with you, Kobe? What you got going on? What's not up with Kobe? Uh, it's been a while since we've recorded. I, I went out with Building 429, mm -hmm. which is fun. Yeah. I love I love those guys. I got to really, I got to be on the bus, which is always, always a vibe. Uh, got to play like four shows, which is, or three or four shows. It was, it was really, really fun. Got close with the band, got close with the crew. Um, just good, good people. Jason Roy, the lead singer, just a great guy. And we ran, my dad and I ran into him at the airport. <laughs> no way. We, yeah. And we... <laughs> <laughs> and we talked we talked about you and uh he's super nice he was like oh man you're kobe's friend like he talks about you man we are so like two peas in a pod like when people talk <laughs> when people talk about like me or you it's always like you're joseph's friend i feel like you're kobe's friend this might be too much of me sharing but my managers were kind of worried that we would be viewed as like a duo that is too much to be shared <laughs> now i'm really insecure no we're no, not a duo no, no but we're we, not a band again, our our whole podcast is that we're two separate artists coming together have a good time right um Maybe but we're a band. i don't mind being viewed as a, a nice little duo and we are, have our things on the side are we a band <laughs> he wants us to be a band. I, I'm, I'm, one day I'm pushing for us to do a side project band together. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. That's We I, have to break first as regular artists, though. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> please. Yeah, God, please. <laughs> Caleb. Caleb. We would love it. Yeah, we would. No, uh, I think we need to write a song for Caleb. We should. We should do it. I'm down for it. That's going to be one of the next ones, I Speaking think. Speaking of Caleb and successful artists on Caleb, we, um, we did this thing where we wrote a song for our favorite artist named Stephen Caleb. Curtis, Curtis Chapman. We did a thing. And he responded. And he liked it. He did. His wife also followed us on Instagram. His wife, which is kind of cooler than Stephen Curtis. <laughs> I'm going to no, be no, real no. with you. No, both are equally cool. No, I'm just kidding. But, but you know, it was, <laughs> no, kinda, kinda but it's, nice. it's awesome. And they were super positive about it. And he loved just like, he, he seemed to really enjoy it. He texted my manager. I think actually he might have texted both he of texted, us. Or... He texted um, my A&R in a group okay. chat with us. And he said he wanted to work with us. So we don't know what that means, but Stephen and we're down, we're down. and we realized we had to finish the song. So, so we we did. We finished. Uh, it. We, we, we got to get him on it. Yes. Um, mm. Speaking of like famous Christian artists, um, mm. we have a special guest coming next week. We do indeed. Uh, what a drum roll! You want you, you want to do the reveal? I would love to do a drum roll. Can okay. we do a drum roll? You can reveal it. I'll reveal it. Here All we right. go. Three, two, one. Uh, Brandon uh, Heath. It's Brandon Heath. Are you serious? Uh, it's, he's a great guy. Stealing it from me? Uh, you're fine. You steal everything from me. I don't steal anything from you. Steal the good looks from me? Uh, no, shh, Joseph, no, I'm just kidding. Joseph, I'm, I'm confident. You're such a... We'll, we'll get into that <laughs> here in a little bit. Later. Um, no, but uh, he's a good friend of both of ours. We mm -hmm. both know him, and he's uh, he's been nothing but kind to us, and 
actually offered. Yeah, when I was doing a write with him, I was telling him about our podcast, and he said, "Hey, man, if you like ever have guests on the podcast, I'd love to be on." And Just I was text- like, "Yes!" <laughs> I texted him right away. I was like, "Bro, we could get Brandon Heath on the podcast." And I was like, "Yes!" So he's uh, he's coming next week. We're really, really, really stoked. Really excited. So about look it. out for that, um, and hopefully more artists are to come. Uh, I've yes. got a couple more in mind that we got to talk about. So should we give a hint? Who? Do you- oh. We, we, uh, we, what, what hint are you going to give? The next artist we're going to have after him, I don't know. I mean, I feel like he's been with us every step of the way. Um, uh, he definitely is providing, uh, hope <laughs> providing to hope. a young generation. Um, source of life, honestly, super good. So, and, a um, source of life. That's all we're going to say. Yeah, okay. That's, we're not giving it away. <laughs> Let's go on to the next segment. All right. Next segment is show and tell. Show and tell. Joseph, what song are you showing to us today? Or who, who wants to start? Uh, you, should, you should go first. All right, I'll go first. Uh, I wrote a really cool song this week that I'm really passionate about, excited about. Um, it's, it's definitely more in the Christian radio genre of songs, which I feel like I've shown a lot recently. We're hoping it's the number one. Well, we, we always hope for that. <laughs> um, but it's, it's one that I've gotten good feedback on from my team. And so we'll see. We'll see. Um, but you'll, see, you'll hear it on social media soon. Uh, it's called Healing in the Water. Take a listen. To lift your head and trust again Still waiting on the miracle Your faith feels dry, impossible But oh my friend, he hasn't finished yet There's healing in the water Hope in the deep There's breakthrough in the river Whatever you need It's for you, it's for me It's for every son and daughter There's healing, healing, healing in the water All right, that was Healing in the Water. That's, uh probably one of my most favorite songs he's ever written oh man uh because i i love songs that make me feel like that just one from the get-go even the verse i was like pulled in oh and and uh the production just the the melodies and it's very heartfelt and i think a song like that for you should go big time oh man well it should go big time i appreciate that buddy thank you i uh we'll see i'm always a little more optimistic but also I kind of tend to lean on the pessimistic side of radio. As both of us do. We do. Some more than others. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when, you, when you get burned so much. That's you know, right. Well, you, but you we'll make see. so many songs. And, That's right. You know, That's right. Don't do anything. That's, That's the okay. game that we signed up for. Um, exactly. But it's, uh, it, is, it is tough sometimes. But I'm really, really hopeful for this one. So, Joseph, uh, next song uh, is yours. So, what do you have for us today, bud? So, I got a song that I wrote, like, many months ago with a friend named Jacob Stanifer uh, called Camouflage. Oh, wow. Is this like a hunting kind of thing? It's uh, Yes, but it's, uh, it's all about um, shooting animals. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, finish that sentence, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so the song is really what we're going to talk about a little bit later today. But like people having a bunch of opinions, not knowing who to listen to. And so many people, you know, I don't know, a lot of people trying to give you advice nowadays. And uh, you don't know like what is valid and what's not valid and anxiety. And it's like, can I let this go? And you're going to hear that. And so I hope you guys enjoy. It's very pop. Mm, okay. I'm addicted to opinions of other people that don't even know And there's nothing to show for it I'm so lost when I'm searching Camouflage till I fit in And I really know that I know that I know That I should let it go, let it go, let it go But I don't know if I'll ever hit the mark And I don't know when Standard even starts Cause every time I think I Opinions of other people that don't even know And there's nothing to show for it I'm so lost when I'm searching Get my flush till I fit in And I really know that I know that I know That I should let it go, let it go, let it go But I don't know Okay, it's camouflage. That was, I love that song. Thanks, man. And I'm going to be real with you. Like, it's funny because that song's about comparison a little bit. And, mm. you know, I uh, I feel that with you sometimes when it comes to production. And, like, you sometimes just do this. I don't, I, I struggle sometimes to do the pop thing a lot. Like, I want to, and it's, it's part of me. But I've been in the zone of radio for so long now mm. that, like, I, 
I get jealous. I'm jealous of you, man. It's yeah, a good so, song. I love how that goes both ways because there's so many things I wish I was like you in everything. I don't know, man. It's just I, I get jealous because you you've got the great melodies, great production, <sighs> and I love the writing on it. It's just a great song, and I, I guarantee you it'll be the one that people comment on the most because it's I great. Don't know. I feel like a song that might be a little bit better that we're gonna work on later this week. Yeah, uh, is a song that I mean you you had the idea for it, yeah. but like we just start coming up with it like just a couple minutes ago. Yeah, and it's this song. Was it not cool to be Christian? Not not cool to be Christian, but it's um yeah it's got a it's a sweet little twist to it. Yes, but uh yeah I was like I was like Joseph let's write a song about like I am a sea I am a sea and he laughed in my mm-hmm. face. No, but I didn't laugh. He, he I did. Was, he went, <laughs> No, I mean, I thought oh, you're was serious. <laughs> but um, I was like, if that's gonna be the chorus, is gonna be dumb. Yeah, it was. But then when we inserted it into the bridge, I was like, oh dang. Yeah, this we'll could see. Be we'll see if we can not cheese it up. But anyways, we'll be on the lookout for that. Well, maybe next show and tell. Yeah, maybe. All right, <laughs> next uh, next segment. All right, this next segment is deep dives. It's a new segment. Uh, Joseph, what's the kind of the posture of deep dives? Uh, deep dives is I feel like a segment where we talk about spiritually weighty topics, things that mm. uh, maybe not a lot of people like to talk about. And uh, when we have this, you know, this podcast, I feel like we can't just be fun and games all the time. We have to talk about things that actually matter, especially Amen. in the life of a Christian. Yeah. And as you can see, we both grabbed our pillows because we're going to need some comfort. <laughs> we're a little <laughs> not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> uh, today's topic is anxiety. Uh, Joseph, um, we've both dealt with anxiety in our mm-hmm. our past, our present, and surely our future. But um, what what's going on with you with anxiety? Well, let me tell you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the therapy pillow. It's my therapy. It's the therapy position. You now, Joseph. You now have the talking pillow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, but for real, anxiety. <laughs> so, uh, I've actually dealt with anxiety probably a lot in my life, mainly because um, as an artist, I think it's pretty natural because you're worried about the future. You're worried about whether you can, you know, make ends meet, um, whether you're going to be successful or not. Um, not to mention, if you've noticed, I don't have head like Kobe has headphones on. I don't because I have been riddled with anxiety with this podcast. I've been watching our our episodes and been so critical of what I do and been anxious about what people think about me, um, and my image. And I feel like generally you're a relatively confident person. M- mostly, I, I, I some feel. Things, yeah, I feel like that's that's the truth with you. Yeah, and I don't think people realize like. As oh, whoo, I'm feeling something right now. I don't know why I'm feeling something right now. Sorry, man. Um, but I don't feel like people realize that, like, as an artist, like your your job is to like look okay for the camera and to, um, just like have it all together. But like the 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 worry and anxiety I deal with, like what people think about me on this platform or just on TikTok or everything, is um very crippling. And it's you have to. Re- I always have to remind myself that like. I have to find my identity in Christ and in, in the work of like what I'm trying to do, which is bring God glory and not glory to myself. But I mean, you can't deny it, like that when you're out in public all the time, like it's just natural for you to like feed your like ego a lot. Yeah. Um, but what, what do you have to say? Kind of well, I think that's really good. Would you say that the anxiety <laughs> is geared more towards the negative opinions that come your way sometimes? Or is it more... What would it? What would you say that zero? If you zeroed in on it, what would it be? Yeah, I think I think I'm just a big people pleaser. Yeah, and me so too. So I'm I'm anxious about like how other people perceive me and if I'm perceived as an idiot because I think in high school I was kind of this socially unaware kid who didn't like know his mannerisms, how people like, and people always viewed me as annoying, and I, that like really hurt me like deeply. And so anytime I act annoying, like I get really like upset because like that's the biggest insult anyone could ever throw at me like oh you're annoying well that goes deep well that's it's just a lot (laughs) i feel like we all have those things in life that we're faced with that are like kind of constant like they keep showing up you know Mm -hmm. what i mean i feel like i had a lot of those things in high school that like you get pegged as this one thing and then that's just what you are and and words do hurt and they become like it becomes a fear, like maybe it wasn't a fear before, but because you were called it so many times, it becomes something that you are afraid of. Mm-hmm. And like, you're not an annoying person, but if you were called that by somebody and maybe by multiple people, I'm sure that you slowly started to believe that maybe you were that. Mm. And yeah. it may, it's not the truth and that's how the devil works, but you know, he, he, he hides his lies best, you know, with, you know, by just using people to tell you lies about yourself you know what i mean yeah. it's just the worst man how so, do you feel like you like 
what are some ways that you feel you've dealt with anxiety, especially in your like artist life? Uh, it's really difficult for me. It's 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 do people care? That's really my thing. Posting things and being like, no one cares about me. Um, that I really have struggled with that throughout my life, and you know, growing my social media account. You know, when I started growing Instagram, uh, I grew to before I got signed, I had thirty thousand followers, and um, that was before Reels or anything like that was a thing. Um, and I was really proud of that. But after Reels and TikTok and all that blew up, I really got this like crippling, uh, crippling fear that no one would ever care. And I'd watch people around me have people that care. Their videos would get millions of views. And um, I just, I, 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 as why I stayed away from Instagram and TikTok for so long was because I didn't want to try because if I didn't try, then I wouldn't know if anybody cared or not. Mm. And so it's been a hard journey embarking on that with you with the TikTok and Instagram thing, but it's been good. Yeah. Um, and I think we have to remember that the Lord is where we find our worth and value. And as artists, we are faced with so many things that we want to find it in, you know, but mm. at the end of the day, if we're Christians and we're Christian artists and we're saying we're doing it for the Lord at the end of the day, it should be about that. Mm-hmm. Um, even though sometimes it's not, and that's our fault. Um, it's hard, man. It's just hard. Yeah. And I think some like practical anxiety that comes with being an artist, like something we probably deal with a lot is the fact that we feel pressure to create content sometimes. Constantly. Like, you know, as musicians, we didn't really sign up to be like, quote unquote, influencers. We're here because we want to make music that like uplifts people's spirits. Yeah. But there's something in our culture nowadays that like, oh, you can't just be a musician. You've got to be more than that. You've got to be a personality. You've got to like make videos that like cause people to laugh. And like, it's not just about music anymore. Here's the thing, man. I got signed in 2019. Um, there was no reels. There was no TikTok in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't know any of that was coming. And I didn't know that that was what my career was going to be faced with. I didn't know that I was going to have to be a content creator. I didn't really want to be. I wanted to just make music and sit in the studio all day and write songs and work on my guitar. That's what I wanted to do. And now it's different and it's yeah. hard. Um, and there's a pivot because it's not like you can choose to do it or not. If you want your career to succeed, you have to do it. Yeah. Um, and so it's challenging, but it's it's life. Yep. Yeah. It's part of it. And you just have to trust, again, uh, as scripture talks about, not to go like super preachy here, but like Philippians 4 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, make your request known to God, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So right. that is the goal to live by every single day. It's definitely a good reminder to have at mm-hmm. all times, too, because in a world that we live in with just technology and stuff, it's it, we need it more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Deep dives, man. Deep dives. That felt good. Felt real good. Yeah. Well, let's hop into something a little lighter, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Game time. Game <laughs> time. Game time. So, Joseph, you prepared a little something, something for us. <laughs> yes. Um, just a side note, we have a timer now that helps us with our segments because I we're feel, trying to cut down stuff. I feel like, but cut down in a good way. Yeah. I feel like it's helped us with our rambling and um, accountability. We're, we're just trying great. to, we're just trying to smooth it out for you guys. Yeah, and I'm Type A, and it helps me like wrap things up a little yes, bit. Yes, he is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Just, thank you. No, I was Gosh. just stating the obvious. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fair. <laughs> um, so today we've got uh, game time, which is my favorite segment and we have this or that today um this which or that. is popular online you know pizza or ice cream or i don't know pizza or pizza or burgers i'd probably be more common pizza or ice cream. <laughs> Both are great. Wow. um but today <laughs> we've to got the marvel cinematic universe this wow. is only included in the mcu canon of films so spider-man one two and three don't count the amazing spider-man doesn't count okay it's only films that are con- like considered in the mcu in canon, canon. Iron Man all the way until okay, but, pretty much now. Um, but what was the last movie real. that came now, out? Now they're all canon because of the multiverse. So <sighs> Whatever. I just did the MCU, uh, like MCU movies. All right, let's get it. And um, we're both big movie fans. I'm excited to see what he's going to say. I made the whole list. I think they're all really close in scale as far as how popular and how much money they made. Crosby's going to read off every single one of them, and we're just going to breeze through them. So here, let's go. All right, option number one, Iron Man or Captain America, First Avenger. Whoa, that is hard. What? Why did you do that? Because I'm All really right, good I, at this I'm going to go tell you our answers. Captain America, Iron Man. 
Wait, you already, like, you guessed for me? I know what yours is. Yeah, I was going to say Captain, Captain America. America and Iron he Man. He knows me so well. I do. Oh, hug, yeah. the bromance. <laughs> we're never going to escape the bromance, no, we're dude. Not. <laughs> no, we're not. We're bringing us there together. No, Iron Man is funny. Um, it's just amazing. It's the one of the best Marvel movies ever. It kicked off the MCU canon. It did. It was one of the best. I just love Captain America, so that's where my loyalty is. I cry. Lie. I cry every time in it. I dude, the ending. I've never seen a Marvel movie end like I that. I got put her in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Anyway, great. Let's go on to the All next right, one. Next one. All right, Avengers or Avengers: Infinity War. Mm. Uh, nostalgia, Avengers, but actual. What's better, Infinity War. Infinity War. Yeah. yeah. I loved the first Avengers, but the last time I watched it, I fell asleep. Well, it's it's it it, 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 it <laughs> the, the visuals the visuals are aged. Trouble, trouble speaking. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the visuals are very aged. Like the CGI is really apparent in it's the final fine. fight. It's just, it, it did not age well. But the theater experience, the first time watching that movie, oh, nothing could unmatched. be unmatched. I mean, I mean, it was up there with Infinity War. Yeah. So, uh, good. anyways, okay, next one. Next one is Thor: The Dark World or Ooh. Thor: Love and Thunder. I tried to Dark pick- World. <laughs> really? Love the Dark World. I hated Love and Thunder, so I was gonna say Dark World I, too, but I, I didn't think he was gonna say that. I actually enjoyed the Dark World a lot. I did too, mainly because of Loki. I thought their chemistry was super good. I thought Jane and Thor were actually good in that movie. Uh, uh, There's better than it was in Love and Thunder. Um, yeah, that's so sure. I'm just saying I think the chemistry was good with all the characters and Loki I, I love anything with Loki in it oh, so, so that was the obvious pick for me okay that was good alright Spider-Man Homecoming or Black Panther oh. Black Panther oh I didn't like Spider-Man Homecoming that much I thought it was fine but I, I like the Amazing Spider-Man better and that's my hot take I love the Amazing Spider-Man more too mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna have to go with um, Spider-Man Homecoming just because I'm the biggest Spider-Man fan I, well that's why I wanted to pin it because I felt like you probably say that's Spider-Man even though me. you know Black Panther's a better movie it is so. a better movie <laughs> okay. no but I like Spider-Man more yeah. alright next why one why do you like spider <laughs> why do you like Spider-Man's villains <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like Spider-Man's villains because they use the people he loves as his weakness he, his weakness is oh, the whoa. people he loves I just like Hold up. Do I have anything in my nose? Just keep going. You're fine. Oh, gosh. Keep going. Next one. I'm dying. Uh, Captain America Winter Soldier or Captain America Civil War? Winter Soldier. Oh. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is a better movie. Yeah. I mean, Civil War is great, but Winter Soldier, I've never been more on the edge of my seat during a whole movie. Both experience. great. Winter Soldier is, is art. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Thor or Doctor Strange? Doctor Strange. Thor for me. What? I love the first Thor. You don't like Doctor Strange. I know. I thought it was good. I just love no, the like first No, like the character. Thor. He's fine. Yeah, you're not a fan. He's. I'm a fan. He's, he's cool to me. <sighs> Thor's kind of like stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you said you like Thor the No, Dark I actually like the first one a lot. Yeah, the, the first one. I like the first two. I like it because it was directed by Kenneth Brenner or whatever his name is. Kenneth, and I felt yeah. like um, the story was good. The plot was good. And uh, starting like as a, a really um, what's what's it called prideful uh, what's I'm um, arrogant character yeah, that's and good. he ends up being like sacrificial by the end. Right, I just I, I I'm a sucker it. for that. Both All great. Right, okay. Next one, Ant Man or Shang Chi? <laughs> Shang Chi, absolutely every day of the week. Ant Man, come on. I, I I'd say Ant Man. <laughs> Have you seen it? No. Oh, he's Asian. That's why <laughs> no, I did it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I actually watched him buy a house. <laughs> What? Yes. Really? It's on a TV show called Selling Sunset. Oh, that's so oh. cool. Yes, and he was on Dude, there. he, that movie is so good. I thought it was a little overhyped. Wow. Yeah, I know. I thought it was so good. Like, yeah. it was, it, the the callbacks to, like, Jackie Chan style fighting, mm-hmm. all of it yeah. was just awesome. I thought the dragon fight at the end was so dumb. <laughs> Shut up. It really was. I thought the, the climax should have been the, the father and the son fighting. That's all I'm saying. No, it was awesome. No, you're dumb. All okay, right. next one. <laughs> Thor Ragnarok or Guardians of the Galaxy? I hate both of these. Do you really? I don't like Guardians. Uh, I well, I I thought Guardians was overhyped as well. I was going to go with Ragnarok because I Ragnarok. thought it was really funny. Um, but it's still not my favorite. I think Thor One is my favorite Thor movie. So. I, I I'm with you. Thor One's my favorite. Or yep. Thor Dark World actually might be my favorite. But I um yeah, that's I that's a hot take. I know. We could we could spend a hot uh, second I'm on that. I'm not a, I'm not a Guardians guy. Okay. I think their humor is stupid. Yeah, but like no offense it, no offense if you like it no offense yeah we know it's like a classic so. it's a classic I think I'm the odd one out but oh, I, I just am not a fan nice one <laughs> alright last one Captain Marvel or Black Widow Black Widow Cap Black to <laughs> Black, Black Widow. Black Widow. Captain Marvel. Black Captain Widow. Widow. I can't yeah. stand Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah, Captain Marvel wasn't the it. worst Avengers character, <laughs> period. Name one character worse than Captain Marvel. 
Uh, you can't. Maybe that, she's maybe the that worst. girl who like punches her way into different like uh, universes in Doctor Strange: Multiverse oh, of Madness. Oh, she's pretty bad. <laughs> I like her very much. Whoa, uh, America yeah. Chavez. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. she's terrible. Uh, okay, all right, that was game time. Don't Thanks be mad her. at us in the comments. Yeah, let uh, us know. Let us know who was better, or like who uh, whose, whose opinions better. were better. Yes, whose opinions were better. Let us know who you like more as a person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, next we're segment. jumping into our next segment. <laughs> Hot takes is a new segment and it's kind of fun. I saw I saw a few uh, things online that said there's no room for hot takes in the church, and I thought, <laughs> really? like, well, here you go. <laughs> um, all, all right, right, we'll kick it off. What we my got? first hot take is uh, Taylor Swift's new album. What do you think? I haven't listened to it. Good because it's the worst <laughs> album I've ever heard. I tell you what, folklore ruined her. She was so good. Uh, 1989 is that what it was 1989 called? 1989 in red. Amazing. She does this folklore stuff where everything's like, I was in the garden in the backseat of your car that you stole with your mom in the bar in the backseat of <laughs> Rosemary, Rosemary Kisses on a Shadow Farm. And I'm just like, what are you shadow saying? Farm. She's not saying anything. <laughs> That's good. And it's terrible. Everything's just like, oh, I'm artsy. Shut up. Yeah. I hate it. I Don't shut up. I'm sorry, Taylor. But... <laughs> Taylor, if you're listening to this, <laughs> no, I just oh, actually she's one of our number one fans. She is super good. I hate it because I'm I was a big Taylor Swift fan and loved her older stuff and and the new stuff just guys. I'm sorry if I ruffled any feathers, but it's not working. For Everything me. went to trash when Reputation came out. That's my theory. It's fair. All right, next next one. What color is the dress? Oh my gosh. So apparently, uh, you know, Kobe and I are not on the same page on this one. This was a trend that happened years ago. Years. Uh, and <laughs> I showed him the picture and he was like, oh, it's white and gold. Dress is white and gold. And I, I thought he was messing with me because it's been proven that it's black and blue. Well, I don't care what it's proven. In that picture, it's white and gold. Yeah, no, it's black and blue. All right. And it will continue to always be black and blue. And I don't understand how people's, you're, you're colorblind. I just, just admit it. I'm not colorblind. Yeah, Crosby says it's black and blue. Bro, yeah, show me the picture. Are you pulling it up right now? <laughs> oh, okay. It's okay. We can move it's on fine. to the next one. All right, we're moving one. on to the next one, which is, all right, this is a deeper one. Is getting married early, super early, wrong? What a, what a or twist. Or bad. <laughs> Color of dresses to, is getting married young. <laughs> like, like 18 out of high school. Is that, is that bad? Um, Because as know. you know, neither of us are married. Um. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. I, I always, I always thought that I was going to go to college. I was going to meet someone at eighteen, get married at nineteen, and have one kid by the time I, was, I 20. was twenty. Wow, I was open to having getting married at eighteen. I liked mm-hmm. it. A lot of people I knew growing up actually got married at eighteen, and they are now all going through divorces. <laughs> and so, I don't know if that's because they got married at eighteen. Or if that's because marriage as a whole is not lasting like it used to. I just think that's it. Because, I mean, people were getting married at like 16, 17, 18, 200, 300 years ago. That's and true. the divorce rate is higher than it's ever been. It and is. And I think we'll continue to only get just worse because people are just not mature. Joseph, what's the percentage <laughs> What's the percentage at? Like, what is it? 50% I don't know. Of marriages? I think it is 50. Even in the church. Oh, it's the 50, church is no better. Yeah, the church is 50% of marriages uh, are ending in divorce, which could is really you, sad. Could you ever get a divorce? Hmm? Could you ever get a divorce? I, I think the only grounds you can get, like, divorce, at least scripturally, are what's, you know, like, yeah. I guess, yeah. in scripture. What's like, yeah, that's, this is a tough topic. Here we go. This is a really hot take. But, I mean, no, like, my goal would never to be to get a divorce. You should never, think, you obviously never get married to get divorced. Yeah, and it's just... It's it's sad because I feel like people maybe aren't fighting as much as they used to, or maybe they are fighting more. I don't know. I'm not married, so I have no, I think, like, <laughs> ability to speak on this. I just feel like our culture in general is just not standing on biblical principles I anymore. I feel like your two real grounds are cheating and, like, abuse. Abuse and, yeah. Like, I feel like, the, I mean... Or even scripture talks about if you marry a non-believer. yeah. And they decide to leave, like, then they... Well, what it. happens if you're both believers, but then one deconstructs? Dang, that's tough. I, you know, I've, I've been in that situation. I know mm-hmm. families that have been there, and I, I don't know. apply then. I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. That's a while. It's, it's hard. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, I don't really have an answer for any of those. I yeah. Just, they're interesting questions. Yeah, I, I don't mean to just be the grandfather. So, so go battle royale in the comments. Uh, <laughs> battle royale in the comments <laughs> on Again, each other. I just think that this culture does not stand on biblical principles anymore, and we're falling further away from I truth. Mean, that's and what the Bible talks America's about. America's not going to exist in 75 years. 
It, wow. It's going to it's going to burn. This guy is going to burn. Is, okay. <laughs> so, no, I, don't I really think, think that God is in control, let me but smooth I mean, this. let me smooth this out real quick. <laughs> the world is is slowly falling away from the Lord and, and we Lord. need him to come back more than Honestly, ever. I want to hope for a revival. I want I want this nation to I go. Mean, I want Jesus to change everything and everyone. I think we're coming. I think we are. I think a revival isn't too far away and I think there's movements of that happening. God, we believe for it. Is that a, oh, is that what is that? Oh, <laughs> CC Winan. Winan. Sorry. Hey, yeah, it just won Song of the Year. It did. At the Dumb oh, Awards. Man. We have to talk about that at some point. We don't. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> no. All right. Jumping into our next segment. Q&A. Q&A. It's time for Q&A. All right, guys. We're jumping into Q&A where we take your questions that you give us and we answer them, which is kind of a fun little segment that gets you guys engaged. All right. Our first question is... Is tell us, Kobe. What is the first question? How'd you guys first meet? How did we first meet? I think we've already answered this before. <laughs> Have we? We did in the car. That's what we did. Oh well, good. Let's do it right now. Yeah. So I was the initiate the initiator. Yeah. In this 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 uh the, I guess this story romance. Um. So I was on New Music uh, Christian Friday. Like I, I check it every single week, and I see this one kid who looks like a Disney star, and I'm like, who is this kid releasing music? And the song is fire. And so I just took a gamble, reached out to him on uh, social media, and I was like, yo, bro, I love your song. Curious to like hear your story. Let's get together and like do something sometime. Which is super cool to me because I'm always the guy who pursues friendships and feel like most of the time I don't get that like back. I feel like much, very much so the initiator and never the guy who gets anybody pouring into him. So it was really cool to have somebody initiate a friendship with me. Mm -hmm. Appreciated yeah. it. And I yeah. was very intimidated like by him for like two months. Like yeah. I couldn't be normal around you yeah. for a long period I of time. I don't get that. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill. I know, but like that's exactly why you're so cool. <laughs> oh, whatever, man. I, I remember meeting you and just like thinking you were awesome at first and uh, we got tacos the first time we met. We did. Yeah. And um, I remember did asking. You, did I ever tell you that God told me we were going to do a podcast when I first met Shut you? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember, I remember, true. I remember sitting in a uh, taco shop with him and being like, Hey man, like, um, like what's your label doing with you? And you're like, I don't know. And I, <laughs> and I was like, Oh no, this kid has got to get this stuff figured out. Um, as so though I, it's been, it's been a fun journey. It's been a journey. It's All right. Next question. Journey. What we got? All right. Have you guys ever struggled with your faith? Ooh. Yeah. Me too. You go first. All right. I definitely feel like I have, I feel like for me, I, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease for those of you who don't know as a kid. Um, I was 10 years old and my mom was also diagnosed with it. And uh, I grew up a Christian, but uh, being in a household kind of sick all the time, doctors constantly between them and, you know, always being hooked up to IVs. I was getting IVs every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, it, 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 to me, it's like, that feels like a faint memory. I don't even remember it really, but I, I blocked out a lot of it. But I remember going through that season of life and most, it was all through high school and just being like, why me? Like, if you're the God that can heal and do miracles and, and you would do that to people who didn't even follow you in the Bible, why won't you do that to me who literally, I go to church and I read the Bible and I'm, I'm a great Christian, right, God? Um, I had a lot of anger built up towards God for a while and it was hard for me to truly dedicate myself to him. But I feel like Christian music was a really good therapy into me working out my, my issues with the Lord and really revealed to me that God is, is there in the middle of it and does his best work in the middle of it. And I've come out of that and I'm thankful and I'm thankful for everything that I've been through because it's made me who I am today. Mm. That's really good, man. Thanks. Um, I went through my struggles when I was a sophomore in college. I was in Bible college, and you know, everyone expects you to have all the answers, and that's precisely why I went through a spiral because I was like wrestling with some really fundamental questions, like why do we trust Scripture? Why do we trust the books that are put in Scripture? Um, and just a lot of like theological, like foundational questions. Um, and I felt like I was alone in my struggle because again, I was with the, like these people training to be pastors. And, and pastor's wives. Like it was a small college and everyone I felt like was on this like God tier status of like being like this super sanctified Christian. And then I was like, I'm wrestling with these super basic questions. Um, but God brought me through like all of it. Um, and I was able to like, just, I don't know, ask a lot of questions and then be helped by people who I've walked with the Lord longer than I had. Yeah. Um, and just by c trying to continue to press into his word whenever I could. And so... Yeah, that was kind of my story. That's great, man. And I think we've all been there <clears throat> when it comes to, like, I think you have to go through a deconstruction of your faith to come out stronger. Yeah. Like, and I've always heard deconstruction should never be the goal. It is a process of you figuring out, like, your faith. 
and reconstruction should always be what you're like striving for. It, you should never like yeah. say, oh, I've deconstructed, now I'm done. You know? It, I think absolutely. And I, I've met a lot of Christians that do feel that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's sad. And I think that a good deconstruction can help rebuild to something stronger and a stronger relationship with the Lord, which is yeah. awesome. Um, okay, last one. We're yeah. already going over, but we'll keep going. Um, do either of you have tattoos? And if not, uh, are you going to get any? Oh, um, I do. I've got one right here. Um, and then, oh, and then, sinner! Yeah, well, a lot of you probably will start unsubscribing because oh, of that. Oh, no. No, I hope not. But, you know, um, I think there's a lot of uh, differing opinions on tattoos, and that's okay. Uh, we can all have our own opinions. Well, the and, Bible's clear in Leviticus that you shouldn't get tattoos. Yeah, and, marks you know. of... Uh, <laughs> you know, pagan gods, but whatever. (laughs) Um, So anyways, to me, it's just like, I think everybody has their own spiritual opinion on that. And that's totally fine. Um, I love tattoos. I think they're a really great expression of art. um, And I think they're awesome. I'm going to, I have like all of mine mean something. Like I've got a matching one with my dad, um, which is really cool. And then I want to get one that reflects back home from North Carolina where I grew up. Uh, So all of them have like a special piece of me. And and I, I, I feel very proud to get to wear them. And I think it's cool. So... I respect it. I have no theological qualms. There's nothing in scripture that could say tattoos are wrong or sinful. I would prefer if someone didn't tattoo themselves with something that would be scripturally offensive. There you go. You know, Um, but I will never get any, mainly just because I overthink things and I don't want to like deal with the pressure of like, oh my gosh, like what am I going to put on my body for the rest of my life? Yeah, I get that. Um, I'm super the opposite, so. Yeah, he's chill. I'm uptight. And I just feel like I'd put too much pressure on the situation. And um, I've never really had a desire. So I feel like if maybe I wanted to, I would try one of those like temporary tattoos for a little bit. That's cool. But I don't know. I prefer the nice Baptist clean look. So I'm, I'm thinking about getting a. I'm thinking about getting a chess piece of your head. <laughs> oh, <my word. laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening to the Kojo Show. Uh, we talked music and we talked life. See you next time. All right. Peace.